going to be talking about that tonight. And um, man, just have a good time. Just have a good time. Okay, so let's open up a prayer, then we'll jump right on into it. Like I said, make sure you have your Bibles with you, something to write with, and make sure you have your, your praising hands going. All right, let's get some typing going on inside of the uh, in, inside of the chat there, and we're going to just have fun. We're going to praise God and just have a good time in the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, so here we go. Kind and eternal Father, we just bless your name today. You are an awesome God, and we just thank you for everything that you've done for us and what you are still doing for us, Lord. You are awesome, and we love you. And Lord, as we come and meet tonight, open our ears, Lord, and give us the understanding of what is being taught today, what your scripture is telling us, Lord, and just come upon me too and give me the words that I need to say. Holy Spirit, direct me in the teaching tonight. And we'll just have a great time praising you and learning about you together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> All right. God is good. Amen. So before we get started, y'all know, y'all can pick up your books anytime. Okay. Y'all can order them from Amazon. Y'all can order them directly from me. Whatever it is, it just helps everything get going and everybody on the same page. It's, a, it's an awesome tool to use. Uh, matter of fact, you know what? We're gonna get some of y'all that's using the books out there to, you know, put up, you know, how you how you like the book, and how everything is going. Amen. Amen. We're gonna do that. Good evening. All right, and we're gonna do that, and uh, you know, just for y'all can see, you know, how people are using them, how are they discover, how is it changing their life, how are they using the books? Because I can tell you all you want, I can tell you all day, you know, what value the book has for you, but. It's really good when you hear it from other people. Amen? Amen. Okay. And um, for those of you that are out there and you, uh, you know, I'm pastoring at North Buxton Community Church out in, uh, in Buxton, North Buxton. And uh, if you're out there, you'll see me come out, you know, preaching and everything else. So I'm going to give you an invite to come on out, not just to see me preach, not just to hear me preach, but to see the people. All right, we got a great bunch of people out there, and, uh, you know, we, we love the Lord. We love each other. We serve each other. It's a community church. They give to each other. I mean, like, you know, not I'm not talking about, you know, um, physically, you know, physical things, and, and they do. They share. They're really nice, but I mean, like, that whole spiritual thing is they give spiritually. You know, they give themselves, and it's just awesome. It's awesome to be you know, pastoring a great group of people like that. So if you're watching the video, look us up, North Buxton Community Church. Our address is easy to find. I'm going to start putting that on here for people too to start coming out. And um, yeah, you have the option to come out. Now, for those of you that do come out to our church, you know that we're going to be starting to study on Galatians. All right, bam, right here. This here is the Paul's Letters to the Galatians, a workbook um, for analytical Bible study, and uh, I just got put done putting this together, and this is going to be one of the books I'm going to be giving you guys so that you can start studying the Word with us, okay, in Galatians. Now, I am putting it on Amazon. It is up on Amazon. Uh, I, they have a mistake in there that they got to fix, uh, so in about three days, it'll be up for sale again for there if you want to buy it on Amazon. If you go to my church, don't buy it on Amazon. Because I'm going to be giving them out, okay? So I'm going to be giving out a batch of them. And it's like I said, it's just, it's a nice workbook. So that something that we can go through and we can be on the same page with each other. So it's, I don't know if it's too much glare, but you'll see that it has the King James copy. Okay, it has a side notes here for, for outlining. It has some, some theological findings here like your inductive findings that you have in the scriptures and then it has questions to help lead you through uh, the study okay and there's two sections I try to I kept it down to two pages so I didn't want people to work in too much going overboard in the study and then also you'll have the teaching that I give on Sunday and the discussion that we're going to give on Wednesday okay so again if you don't go to our church I'll give you another reason to come on out but for those of you that do, I'll be gifting these to y'all, right? I'm going to take care of you. 
Everybody that comes out is going to get one. And if you use them, praise the Lord. All right. Now, if you don't go to our church and you still want to follow the study, you can pick it up on Amazon. Not right now. It's on there, but don't pick it up right now. Okay. Three days time, it'll be up and going. All right. So by Wednesday, it'll be good to go. Okay. But other than that, praise the Lord. God is good. Okay. Oh, thank you, Shelly. I did, you know. Girl, you you know you, you've been helping me. Okay, we're also giving you notebooks so you can have additional note-taking paper. So we'll be giving out duotangs and stuff like that, too. Uh, we're a Bible-believing church, y'all. Bible-believing community. So that's where this came from with the 52 Weeks Devotional. Okay? Um, the church, and I know everybody wants to say it, our church is growing. It's growing, you know, just at the right speed. Not too fast, not too slow. We're going to start watching the waters flow and communion, or not communion, but baptism is going to start happening. Okay, we're going to start. God is blessing our church in so many ways. And I'm just taking a minute to just gloat on our church because I love the Lord. I love the people. I love our church. And you guys are awesome. And I wouldn't be, you know, it's funny because can I just, can I just testify for a minute? I know this is just weird. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not even, we're supposed to be doing it. I'll cut all this out for all those other people. Uh, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but this is a good testimony. We've been going for 17 weeks. This is 17 weeks right here. We're going to have our 17, our 17th week. And we're talking about something that's so important, right? Overcoming worry, you know, and for years I wanted to pastor. Thank you, Gary or Sherry, whoever you are, or both of you. <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to pastor, but it didn't happen. It took 30 years. 30 years before now I'm, I'm pastoring. It's 30, it's been 30 years. Somebody say God's right on time. Right on time. Not when I wanted it. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I, I didn't have, uh, uh, I didn't have the boldness. I didn't have the boldness. I worried about, oh, here we go. Here's our theme. I worried about what people thought. Even though I tried to be strong. I worried about what people thought. I worried about, you know, well, if I say this, how will people take it? You know, if it's coming from the scriptures. But God used me in that time to make me a Bible believing, you know, individual that loved the Lord, loved what the Bible is teaching us. And I believe it. So, so now, now is a time where he puts me into a church for me to, you know, to lead under the Holy Spirit. And in doing that, he's still teaching me afresh. I mean, it's amazing. And, but it's, it's funny because it's, it's not what I expected, but it is what I expected. And I've heard horror stories about pastors going to churches and I hear, you know, very good stories. And I have to tell you, I got a very good story. I got a very good story. And as the people are growing, it's just touching my heart. It's, I'm, I'm just so ecstatic. Um, they're growing theologically. They're learning theologically. Uh, they're, they're thinking biblically. Right. And that is awesome. You know, God's timing, not ours. That's right, Lorene. And, um, I mean, God is just awesome. So I'm, I'm bragging on y'all. <laughs> I am in the right, you're in the right place at the right. Yeah, all right, amen. That's right, Deb. That's exactly right. And um, all praise to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen? Amen. All right, that's enough, I guess. I can testify on this all day. I'm happy, he, you know, and um, just the fact that I'm a workbook guy. So for every time we do a study, I'll be coming out with a different workbook. And uh, it's just a good resource. We can, all the resources I see out there, I see a lot of good ones. I do. But you'll notice that mine's a minimalistic, right? A minimalistic resource, right? It's, it's a, and it, I think it's such a great, a good idea. It's not a good idea. It's a God idea, right? It comes from him. But I think it's such a great idea because... I'm, I'm trying not to just just lead you and tell you what to think and you'd stop. Same thing for the journal, 
right? The journal, same thing. It's very minimalistic, okay? When you open it, you have space to have your thoughts, and I just guide those thoughts. Galatians is coming up. I'm going to be preaching on Galatians. We're going to be taking up Galatians again on Bible study night, but you'll have enough information. I'm just guiding your thoughts. You'll have the information and you. we're going to be praying and the Holy Spirit's going to guide us through. And by the time we're done, you're going to have your own little mini um, commentary on the book of Galatians. Right? This is 52 pages. Okay? 52 pages in there. So you're going to have your own mini, mini book on Galatians, your own little commentary. So when you get done, okay, you can go back. You can, you can, you can teach this. You can take this on the road, and and or better yet, we might be able to start some small groups as our church grows. And those people that are being taught, you'll be able to take your Galatians book, and you'll be able to teach in small groups. I know some of y'all get scared, but that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be teaching. I can't do everything. We're supposed to be teaching and going out. Amen. But check this out. This devotional time that we're going through is awesome. It's awesome because this devotional time is teaching you how to go. I don't care what church you go to. I don't. I don't care what church you go to. You can go to any any church. But if you take what you're learning during this devotion time, 17 weeks. If you take just the first 16 weeks, because I told you last week to, you know, give what you've learned. And, you know, unfortunately, there wasn't much out there that people put on, you know, unfortunately. But maybe that'll change. Maybe that'll change. But the thing is, though, is as you're learning from week to week, that information that you're learning is so valuable. And I want you I want you to see that. OK, saints. I want you to see that the things that you are learning, they are important. And when you learn them, there's going to be people out there that you're going to encounter from week to week, day to day, and they don't know those things. Some people you're going to meet, and they're, they're, they do know them. And that's great. That's awesome. That is. But there's, going to, there's so many people out there that don't know any of this stuff. And when you sit and talk with them, you have ammo. You have material that you can share with them and you can pull your journal out and you can share with them what you've, you know, what you've learned. Or if, it, if it's up here because you've made it a habit, right? So I know, I know a lot of people I talk to and they just can't, they can't share, you know, they, they're worried. They have fear inside of them. And what do we do to overcome that fear? So this is a perfect week to be talking about this because now that you're, some of you are 17 weeks in, some of you are 10 weeks in, some of y'all came in a little later, some of you are three weeks, two weeks, but now that you're in, okay, those, those of you that have been in it for more than two months, more than eight weeks, okay, you have enough if you just go out on faith that you can talk to somebody about. All you got to do is just pick one. You don't have to know all eight. You don't have to know all 17 that we're talking about. Just pick one and familiarize yourself with it. I mean, really get to know it and then see how it connects with the other weeks. Maybe one point for each week. Maybe one point for just two of the weeks. Okay? But though that's the area that, you know, that you're like, yeah, I can really, I can really understand this, right? Okay, and I, I, I want to be able to share this. So instead of trying to know everything, you're not going to seminary. You know, that's that's for me, right? That's why I study. I, I do all that stuff. Not everybody can do all that. But for you, if you can get it down, just chunk it down to just one or two major things, and then you start to share just those one or two major things, the things that impact you the most. I'm telling you, you're going to start moving mountains. You're going to start moving mountains. That's what faith is. Okay? You see it, what God has done for you in your life. You understand what he's done for you in your life. And then, whoo, you take it and you give it to someone else. Amen? Amen. So this week, overcoming uh, worry and it's going to touch a lot of other things too it's going to touch fear you can apply it to fear you can apply it to that 
And today I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you through the scriptures. I'm going to encourage you through the word today. And I'm going to do a lot less talking today. But I'm going to give you the word so that you can just let it settle in your heart. Okay, thy word I have hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against thee. You hide it in you so you get to know it so that you don't sin and you know it so that you can share it and you know it so that when people come across, they need it. The Holy Spirit can use you and give it out and you can touch somebody else. Amen. All right, here we go. So let's get started. Y'all done got me going. I just want to get, oh, shoot, got me going. Going to make me start preaching. I'm preaching up in here. All right. Okay, minimize that. And here we go, folks. I can't move that. Oh, there it is. There it is. I got 10 slides for you today. Teaching view is on. All right, just in case somebody wants to see me and know that I'm here and I'm alive, I'm up here in the camera corner. All right, camera corner, corner of the camera. <laughs> okay, and uh, okay, so here we go. We're talking about overcoming worry in week 17. All right, overcoming worry in week 17. Amen. So. Like I said, last week, y'all know I was sick. I started some, I got something going on inside of me and it just tore me up and postponed it. Couldn't do it, postponed it, couldn't do it. So, all right, push back. So, we got two weeks in. Were you faithful? You don't have to say nothing to me. I'm just asking out loud so that you can hear it. But were you faithful in your devotions? I expect many of you to say, yes, I was. Yes, I was, because I know some of you and I know what you were talking and what you were doing and you were still doing, looking and reading on things. And so I know some of you are, but just ask yourself and challenge you if you weren't. OK, if you're one of those that you just weren't. OK, did you take a week off because I took a week off? Well, I had to, but is that what happened? OK, and. What I want you to see is, is that I want you to be able to see that if you are tired and I know you still might go to church, you still might have lessons and things on the side that you're watching and those things are excellent. And if you need to step away, if you need to step away from the devotional because you got other things going and, and it's okay, it's okay. This isn't something where you get down on yourself because you can always come back and you can always pick up what we pick up or you can always, hey, you know what? I didn't do last week. I took a break. You know, maybe my life was busy. It's OK. Because you're doing other things. Now, if you weren't doing other things, if you weren't going to church, if you weren't going to a Bible study, if you weren't uh, doing your own individual study at home. You know, if you weren't watching trustworthy preachers online, <laughs> okay, and you just sat all by yourself and did nothing and you watch, I don't know, some crazy television reality shows and you didn't think about God for two weeks, then you can tell you, say to yourself, you know, yeah, I think there's a, there's a problem with that. There's a little problem because we should never put God on the back burner like that. Okay. Because he doesn't put us on the back burner. Ever. He is always with us. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He was always there for us. Okay? So we want to make sure that we're always in a state of worshiping. Because that's what the Bible says. We should always be worshiping. We should always be giving him thanksgiving for all the things that he's done for us. We sh he is our Lord and our Savior. Okay? And that's how we should look at him. That's how we should see him. So if you skip a week... I don't want you to get down on yourself. But now, let me ask you this. Those of you that did do your study and you were going strong. Actually, this goes both ways. Even if you were one that slipped away. What did you learn? 
Was it easy to continue? Was it easy to slip away and say, I'm not going to do it this week? Was it simple? Did it become not a priority? Just questions to ask, something to ask yourself, something for you to really think about uh, as you're doing your studies, okay, as you're going through the devotional. Because remember, this is here to help build you up, not tear you down. The devotional here and the encouragement that we give and those of you that are putting the scriptures on every single day or putting on the prayers. You know, we may not see who's reading those, but in those times when you need them, they're there for you. Amen. They're there. Use them. Let you get that spiritual strength built up. And then then you can go back and say, yep, I'm reading my Bible. I'm reading my scriptures. Yep, I'm praying. Yep. I'm doing all these things that I know I'm supposed to be doing. I'm in there. I got it. Okay? So just remember that. All right? So that's a review. I want to make sure that um, you're not getting too hard on yourself when you don't do the devotional. But I want you to remember that it's always there for you. That's why we have the videos. And you can catch up. Go back and watch it. Amen? Amen. Okay. All right. Let's move on. I know. I don't know. I think I might have missed you guys because... I'm really talking tonight, you know, and uh, but it's all right. All right, let's go over our scripture of the of the year. Matthew chapter six, verse thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. And, you know, the more you stop and think about it, if you just stopped right now. What does that verse mean? I'm sure some of you can come up with several points. Just bang, 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 bang. Because we've been talking about it for 16 weeks already. <laughs> 16 weeks in one verse. Today's the 17th week. In one verse. Is that, man, have you ever would have thought? Man, if, if this is, I think, uh, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is probably where it's going. This verse here is probably going to be the verse for the, you know, for the rest of my ministry until I die. Because I found out how it touches everything. Everything in life and everything throughout scriptures. It is telling. It's, it's the truth. God is speaking truth to us. And he is there. He is revealing himself. And we should feel that way about the entire Bible. Amen? The entire Bible is truth. We have to believe it no matter what. We can't pick and choose what section we choose to believe and what section we choose not to believe. We can't sit back and say, well, you know, that was changed throughout history, but this part of it's okay, right? I got one amen on that. Oh, maybe two. Nope, just one. Oh, that's okay. Maybe more is coming. But we have to believe this book because it's the only one we have. It tells us our standard. It tells us everything that we are supposed to do in life, everything that we're supposed to do in the kingdom. Now, isn't that something? So let's look at today. Today we're talking about prioritizing God's kingdom helps you overcome worries and anxieties by placing your trust in his care and plan. You can experience a sense of peace that transcends life's challenges. That's our weekly reflection. That's our reflection for the week. Amen. Notice, though, as you as you hear that. I got that little frame down in the corner, the little thing that says hope. When you read that. You should feel like there's some hope in your life at that point. Right. All right. I like that, Monique. Straight up. It's the unfailing word of God. Talking about the scriptures. Amen. And. Uh, Sherry, amen. Now, when we look at this, this reflection, prioritize God's kingdom. Notice every week we start out with prioritizing God's kingdom. Okay, not our lives first, but God's kingdom first. Okay, but prioritizing God's kingdom helps you overcome worries and anxieties. Really? Does it now? Hmm. 
and it has a little statement here by placing your trust in his care and plan you can experience a sense of peace that transcends life's challenges his care and his plan really do we believe that and do we honestly believe that you know for everything that we read in scripture that's what we see but do we really believe it and that's the key so here's some questions for you notice hope is still down in the corner I should have put it at the top I should have put it in all four corners right four corners representing the the entire earth and everything thereof but do you have worries today do you have worries I would say most of us do you know some we might consider small some might we might consider big but we all have some worries right maybe if not right now maybe tomorrow maybe the next day but worries are present they come and they go it's like a roller coaster you know you have your ups and your downs in life and how well you look at scripture and you know scripture and you trust scripture that is going to give you the attitude notice i didn't say you're going to come up with the attitude but the scriptures give us the right attitude right on how to handle those situations are we trusting in god in those moments so do you have any worries today are you letting those worries control you that's another thing man that's huge Come on, just be human for a minute. You know, I, I like being human. Sometimes things get bad. Sometimes we have worries and we call them concerns. But, you know, we get there and, yeah, some of them can control us. You know, a loved one that's, you know, hurting. Health might be declining. Um, maybe you're in trouble with the law or something. I don't know. I'm trying to make some stuff up here. Um, how about your, you, you personally? Maybe you're sick. You have a condition, right? How does it? How much does it worry you? How much? And not only that, but how far? How far? And how much? How willing are we? Are we to take the Bible at its word? That's the other side of it. Okay, not even close to worrying like I used to. Well, that's a big thing. Amen. Hallelujah. And yes, I do. Okay. All right. We got both sides being being told out to us. Yes. Now, I don't, I worry, but I don't worry as much either as I used to. I automatically, I go and throw it on to the Lord. But you know what? It took years for me to get there. Change can cause me anxiety. Yes, it can. And anxiety is just another word for worry. Amen. So when we look at these things and, and we realize and we're just honest with ourselves and say, yes, I do have some of those anxieties. I do have some of those worries. Right. And then the big question, the last one, do you have peace in the time of a storm? Like it might be a drizzle. Maybe it doesn't have to be a storm. But do you have peace when you find yourself having all these, you know, these anxious feelings, the anxiety tips up? Do you have peace when the when that fear? Well, it's hard to have peace when fear comes in. But does fear overtake you and take away your peace? You see, these are things that, you know, sometimes I just sit back and ask myself. You know, I have those conversations with myself just to make sure, like, am I thinking right? Am I in the right place? And I want to make sure, am I leaning on God's word and... You know, that those are the conversations which you have by yourself that you find that you're pulling out these true meanings. So some peace. OK, some peace. Some peace is better than no peace. But what if I said that you can have total peace? Would you believe me on that? See, I believe once we understand what the scripture is telling us, why the scripture is present in our lives, that you can have total peace. Because you have a God that says what? Here, go back. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Okay, we can say that 
if we're trusting in God and we're leaning on him and we're searching for his kingdom, we're searching for his righteousness and we accept the fact that he's the one that's taking care of us. Ooh. Then all the things that you would be worried about, food, clothes, drink, health, death, life. He says, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I like what Lorene, Lorene just put in there. She says, we can't control it. Take it to the one who controls everything. And that's what our verse is telling us. That's what our verse is telling us. So in all things that we do, we are supposed to be right here. Right? I'm working on it. And there's some thumbs up on there. Amen. We're all working on it. We're all working on it. Yep. And he is the peace that passes all understanding. I gain peace and praise songs and reading or listening to God's word. Amen. Now you see what's coming out today. You guys are being so honest and you guys are just, you know, man, ladies, you're tearing it up. You're tearing it up tonight. All these things that you're putting in here are blessings. You know, y'all should be putting hearts and thumbs ups and hugs on every single one of these because it is exactly where we should be. And, you know, when we're honest with ourselves and we can be honest with other people and around with people that we trust. And I'm telling you, encouragement comes out of it. And that's what we're having tonight. This is encouraging me. This is awesome. All right. This is awesome. Here, let's go to the next slide. Here's a definition for worry. All right. A sense of uneasiness and anxiety about the future or even your present situation. Because your present situation will dictate how you feel about your or think about your future. Scriptures indicates that such anxiety is ultimately grounded in a lack of trust in God and his purposes. You know, and this is where we get to the scripture where it says even worry is sin. Right? So we fall into that worry and worry is sin because that means we're not trusting in God in that particular moment. We're not trusting in God's plan. We're not trusting in God's word. You know, he said he would do it. And we're not trusting in him in that moment. Oh, I got an ouch up there. Okay. But that's that's where that comes from. So what we want to do is we want to turn that around. And how do we do that, though? How do we say, you know what? I trust God. I trust God's plan. I trust God's purpose for my life because can we be mad at God, right? Can we get mad at God if we are trusting in his purpose for our life? Hmm. See, and that's where it's sin because we're not trusting him. His plan is perfect. Amen. His plan is perfect. Everything he's worked out for you, for me, is going to happen. His plan is perfect. He's already looking out for you. He already knows where your meal is going to come for tomorrow. If the money that you're looking for that you need, he already knows where that's coming from too. He has everything. You need a friend next week. Oh my goodness, that friend's going to be there. You know why? Because he already has it set up. So you will have that meeting. It's a divine meeting. He's already got it all set up for you. So even when you get sick, it's in God's plan. And I keep saying it over and over and over again. Y'all know me. I keep telling you. You know, I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at an early, Crohn's disease at an early age. I should have been dead. I almost died. I almost worked at a factory. I almost had a vehicle fall on my head. I should have been dead. But you know what? Blessed be to God and his plans. He was teaching me something through each of all those times. He taught me through sickness. He taught me through through a time period where I was just, you know, fear settled in my life about death. And I mean, he taught me so many things. So, so when I look at the condition, I've convinced myself through scripture. Absent from the body, present to, with the Lord. You hear that? Absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's a blessing. And I know that's deep. I ain't even trying to go that far. Let go and let God. That puts it a simple way. Thanks, Deb. That was right on time. Everything happens for a reason. God's reasoning. Amen. Everything is happening. And it's all for God's. It's all for his glory. 
nothing happens where God cannot get the glory and will not get the glory out of. You may not see where it's coming from, but he is getting the glory. Here, let's go on. I got some ver verses for y'all to see tonight. This is to encourage you, y'all. This is to encourage you tonight. As a matter of fact, you've encouraged me so much. I'm just, you know, man, y'all get me all mushy, but y'all just a blessing. Okay? You're a blessing. And everything that you've written up there is a blessing. All right? But here, let's look at some of these scriptures. Okay. God pulled you through another situation, bad situation. Amen. Give him the praise no matter what. Psalms 92, 19. Or I'm sorry, Psalms 94, verse 19. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. I had to use the King James because when I read it in my other version, this one was just so like, oh my goodness, the in the multitude of my thoughts, where within me, the things that I think, the crazy things that come into my head, the times that I'm worrying about things and I'm fearful and I'm scared, I'm frightened all the time, all those things that come into my head. They come in by day, they come in by night. All those things, thy comforts, Lord, thy comforts delight my soul. They bring me out. They bring me out of all that stuff. It's just like you have a, come on now, you have some dirty water. Y'all seen the palm olive commercial? And you just put one drop and all the grease just moves away. <laughs> I don't know why my mind went there, but yes, amen. God is good. Just just, just one comfort from the Lord. Just knowing that he's there moves all the junk, moves all the gook, moves all the grease out of the way. And it's he and his thoughts that are left with me in my soul, y'all. Come on now. Praise the Lord because this is the word I need. Amen. Sometimes it's hard to encourage myself. And that's why we come here to encourage each other. Amen. Come on, let's go to another verse. Another verse. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop. It's heavy. It makes you sluggish. It makes you bend over. It's hard to carry. But a good word maketh it, it good. So you can have all this stuff on you. Come on, Monique. That's, this is what you're saying. It's hard to encourage yourself, right? And this is wisdom coming from Solomon. And Solomon is telling us, you know, the heaviness that we have in our hearts. Man, it makes us so that we don't want to do anything. It makes us want to stay in bed. It makes us want to cover up, not get dressed. I don't want to eat for days. I don't want to go outside. I don't want to open up the curtains. I don't want to open up the blinds. I don't want to see the sunshine or nothing. I'm going to stay in my pajamas, stay in my house coat, rolled up on the couch, got TV on, don't even know what's playing, and I'm in just a sluggish mood. I don't, I'm not saying nothing to nobody. I'm not answering my telephone. Who's been there? Who's been there? It might have been a while, but somebody's been there. Somebody might even be there today. But that heaviness in our heart from this world. But Solomon is letting us know. A good word maketh our heart. That's what that it is. That heart makes our heart glad. Encourage somebody this week, y'all. Y'all don't know what people are going through. You know, you don't know how what a kind word is going to do to someone. Or somebody that you can pick up the phone and you can just... You can just reach out to him and say, hey, you know, brother, hey, sister, I'm just thinking about you. And I just want to say I love you today. Isn't that something how that can lift you up? Now, imagine 
how you can lift somebody else up just by giving them that word. Just something. So it's free. It don't cost nothing but what? A minute of your time? Two minutes? Five minutes? Call somebody and reach out to them. Solomon knows what he's talking about. He's the wisest man that ever lived. And I'll stand on that. Amen. Holly, hello. How you doing? Yeah, we got many times. We got me. Yeah, we all been there. If we're going to be honest, we all been there. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious. Here we go. About anything. Not, not even my bills. About anything. Don't be anxious about anything. Not even my kids. Don't be anxious about anything. My grandkid. No, don't be anxious about anything. My job. Where is my job going to come from? You know, no. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything. What? How many things? Two things, ten things. No, everything. All things. By prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Ain't that something? You got somebody you can turn to and say, hey, instead of me worrying about this thing, I'm just going to give it to him. Eh, that was already said earlier, wasn't it? I'm going to just give it to God. I'm going to let God take care of the situation. I'm going to let God take care of me. I'm going to let God go ahead and show himself off. And then when he, after he does that, then I'm just going to praise his name and lift him up. And then what am I going to do? I'm going to share that with other people that are out there and tell them, you know what? I, I live in a kingdom that I don't have any worries. I live in a kingdom where I don't have to worry about these things that people of the world worry about all the time. I have I have a person that takes care of me. I have a big brother that watches over me. And they're going to say, what, you rich? Your brother rich like that? Your brother got your back no matter what? My brother will come to me and pick me up in a storm when I get stuck. My brother will call me in the middle of the night when he knows I'm feeling down. He's always right on time. My brother will pick up his phone, pick up a phone, and it might not even be his voice. It's somebody else's voice that he's talking through. But that person will call me and say, how you doing today? I'm telling you, I got a brother that when I need a quarter, he gives me a dollar. I got a brother that when I'm sick, he just don't give me Tylenol. He gives me the gospel. You know what I'm saying? God is there for everything. If you're putting your trust in him, if you're trusting everything and trusting in his word, he says all of this thing. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about where you're going to live. Don't worry about how you're going to die. Don't worry about how you're going to live. Don't worry about if you're getting sick. Don't worry about any of that stuff. God's got it. So we put it all in his hands. Yeah, we get on bended knee. We get down on our knees and we pray to him. And if we can't get on our knees, he'll still hear us. If we have to sit on the edge of the bed, he's still going to hear us. If you can't roll over and you're on your back, he's still going to hear you. That's how good our God is. That's how God is everywhere. He is everywhere. Amen and amen. I better stop. Y'all got me going. Y'all got me going. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I got the tears and everything. I'm fighting them back. <laughs> got me fighting all that stuff back you know what god need god he has a praise break god is god is good he deserves everything and more yes that, mm -hmm. praise break he deserves it he's awesome everything about him is awesome he can't be beat he can't be topped he can't be moved aside he can't be replaced he's our god first peter chapter 5 verses 6 to 8 this is our last set of scripture y'all to encourage you, to encourage you today. I like that glory. Oh, I like that. Oh, glory, yes. First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 to 8. Humble yourselves. Wow. Let's just stop there for a minute. Are you humble? It's hard to be blessed, okay, when you do not have a humble heart. Let's just stop right there and just say that up front. Okay? There is a condition when it comes to God's blessings. He will teach you things to humble you so that it will open up the door to the blessings. You must have a humble heart. Humble yourselves. Therefore, check this out. How do we do that? 
under the mighty hand of God. You see, when we humble ourselves, it's not for ourselves. It's not because of ourselves. It's not because we're capable of any of that things, but because God's mighty hand is upon us. He is teaching us. He is setting our mind in the right place to think not like how we do down here, but as in his kingdom. So we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that here's, oh, here's the result, the cause and effect. Here's the, uh, here's the effect. So that at the proper time, he may exalt you. You don't exalt yourself. He exalts you. He puts you where you need to be. Remember I told you earlier my, my testimony, right? I always wanted to be a pastor. And it took 30 years. It wasn't my timing. I remember complaining and saying, why? Why don't these people just leave me alone? But right here. Humble yourself. And I had to. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that's the place. So that at the proper time, he may exalt you. Not me, not man, but God. And that goes true for all your situations too. He will exalt you at the right moment, at the right time when you're humble. Casting all your anxieties on him. There we go. What are you going through that you need to cast on him tonight? What are you going through? Not our will, but God's will. But what are you going through today that you want to cast upon God? Y'all think about that and y'all pray about those things and give it to him right away. And why do we do so? Because he cares. Because he cares. He cares for you. He calls us children. He's our father. Abba. Abba in the Hebrew meaning source. That's where we come from. He adopted us. Romans chapter 8. He adopted us into his family. Okay, when you're adopted, you are you have all the rights there thereof bestowed upon you. He is our father. He is watching over us. He is he is the one that is taking care of us. He is the one that is responsible for us because he cares. He cares for you. Verse eight, be sober minded, be aware, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Isn't that something? But, but if you go back and you're humble and you're under the mighty hand of God. And if you cast all your anxieties upon him. The only thing you got to be watchful out is if you hear that <clears throat> of the lion, <clears throat> the one that would be prowling around to take you down. All you have to do is just stay in the place where God's hand is over you and he can't touch you. Now, you might have trials, but you'll overcome those trials. Instead of being fearful, you give it to God immediately. Instead of having anxiety, you give it to God immediately. All this talk about how we're the right place to be. And then he says, be watchful, be sober minded. Make sure that your head is clear. Make sure that you can see straight because the adversary, the devil. Mm. All right. The lion can't touch me. I am God's child. <laughs> Amen. All right, y'all. I think I done tired myself out. But God is good. God is good. And tonight, I wanted to use to encourage you. I wanted to, you to see scriptures that empowers you to, to stand in the faith. I wanted to give you scriptures that would uplift you. I wanted to give you scriptures that when you heard them, you could say, yes, no matter what you're going through, let them remind you who your father is. Amen. Amen. All right. I truly believe that. Amen. Amen. I agree with you. Applying God's word. Amen. All right. That's a good one. All the time. All the time. And that's our lesson for tonight. That's our lesson for tonight. And I hope you're encouraged. Be encouraged at all times. And if you're not, you know, you have friends all around you. Go ahead and talk to them. 
Open up the scriptures. Talk to God. If you want to hear God talk back to you, read the scripture out loud. Amen. Because that was written for us. He's communicating to us through his word. And if you need someone just to lean on, you need a shoulder, call, call a friend. Call a friend. But be encouraged. You know, even though you don't let, you know, let yourselves get down and you don't have to worry, sometimes it still gets heavy. You can get heavy and not worry. You can still, it can get heavy and you're not worrying. You can still have peace. And your knees can still be, be, you know, start to wobble because of the burden. But that's why you got brothers and sisters to help pick you up. Amen? Amen. Great lessons. Thank you, Pastor. All right, you're welcome. You are welcome. This was very on time for me. Amen. All right, great lesson again. Thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord. Give God all the praise. And what a blessing. Amen and amen. All right. Sing the song, Why Worry When You Can Pray. See, Jesus, he will lead the way. I don't know that song. Do I know that song? You're going to have to lead that on Sunday, Lorene. So you better get your me, 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 get your voice ready. Uh, give it to Brandon or something so he can he can sing that on Sunday. I'm serious. All right. <laughs> give it to Brandon <laughs> so he can play it. Amen. Amen. Yes, I feel more positive. Amen. Have a great week. All right. Well, don't leave yet. We're going to close out in prayer. Then you can leave. All right. Let's do that. Let's close out in prayer right now. Uh, we've been going strong. Okay. Let's close out in prayer. Kind and eternal Father, we just bless your name today, Lord. We just want to say we love you. We want to say thank you. We want to say that you're an awesome God. Lord, we all have some times we get weak and we all have some times we get worrying. And Lord, we know that according to your scriptures, we can read them and we can hear you. You're with us. You're standing by us and you're telling us not to worry because you have everything under control. The things that we go through, Lord, we go through because we are learning something. There is something there that you want us to know. There is something there that you want us to glean. There is something there that you want us to, to internalize so that as we get stronger from these pains that we go through, Lord, that we can teach somebody else. So, Lord, we thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who guides us through all these things, oh God. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to be with us and guide us every step of the way. We trust you, oh Father. We trust you. Lead us, Holy Spirit. Guide us through your word. And again, ooh, bless the Lord. Oh, oh my soul and all that is within me. Bless your holy name. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, folks. All right. So for those of you, don't forget, you can pick up a journal anytime. Don't forget, don't go buying... Don't do not buy the Galatian workbooks. OK, I'll be giving them to you. OK, as soon as they get the corrections, we'll have them for our Bible study and we'll be giving you um, some do a tangs with extra paper and stuff in it, too. I want you all to be, you know, educated in the word of God. I want you all to know everything that you can. I want you to be prepared. I want you to be strength. Sherry, have a good one. Everyone else, Lorene, Lorraine, have a good one. Amen. Praise you, everybody. Have a good night. I appreciate each and every one of you. Stay blessed. Yep, you stay blessed. Invite somebody out to the group. Invite people. Come on, let's invite it. We're at, what, 61 people. Let's hit 100. Let's hit 100. All right. Praise God. It's been It's been an hour. Pretty much four minutes, five minutes away. It'll be an hour. God bless you. I'm going to let y'all have the last words. Kind words cheers you up. Amen. Yep, definitely stay blessed. In a good night. In a good night. I got to go upstairs and get ready to, well, it's eight o'clock. He's got an hour, but I'm tired tonight. That wore me out, y'all. God's word is good, though. Ain't it? Ain't it though? Ain't it good? You know, I'm. Gonna, I think I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna start just reading God's word. Um, I've been thinking about that. 
you know, just coming on and just reading. And uh, don't know what yet. I'm, I'm still waiting when the time's right. Life is, I got a lot on my plate. But it's all good. God is good. Yes, have a blessed night, Holly. If you, if those remember, if you ever miss anything, you can put the video up right when it's over. It'll be up within the five, ten minutes. It really is. Hallelujah. Woo. All right now. I can tell right now, Monique, you whatever church you you join, you gonna you gonna be getting it started up in there. <laughs> Hear them, amen, hallelujah. <laughs> ah, all right. You're wonderful, Holly. You're wonderful. Mm. All right, y'all. All right. I'm going to uh, click off now. I'm going to edit the tape, you know, just get a little clip off the beginning. And I'm going to post it up for you, amen. All right, God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> I'm going to be pulling up on y'all. <laughs> well, I can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Gary, Sherry, have a good night. God bless you. <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm signing off. Signing off. Amen. God bless you.